everyone, it's me Jeanette and this is a video on using primary colors to make secondary colors. So let's just get right into it. I'm going to be starting this first block um, to make green and the combination that I'm going to be using of primary colors to do green is yellow and blue. And let's just start off by having a discussion about what colors I've chosen to actually do this mix. Um, and the bar at the very top, I'm going to do green, and then I'm going to do orange, and then I'm going to do purple, and then a mix of all three primary colors to show you what happens when you mix primary colors and how you can attain darker colors by mixing primary colors. And what does that all mean? So um, the way that you're going to choose your colors for primary colors is it's really good a good idea to have a color wheel handy. So you can have a color wheel online, which is good, but if you actually have one physically in your hand, that's even better because then you can just use that and test it against your, um, your colors that you have available to you and try to find colors that are as close to the primary colors as you possibly can. So in this case, I'm working with polychromos and the color that I'm working with right now is uh, cadmium yellow. And uh, so that's from Faber-Castell. And then I'm going to put cobalt blue on top of that. So I'm actually starting with a very, very light layer of yellow. And why did I decide to go with yellow? So yellow and blue um, combined together make the secondary color of green. And, um, but why did I choose yellow first? So I chose yellow because it's lighter than the blue. And if I actually put down blue first and put yellow on top of it, it's a lot harder to actually create the color of green by working with blue first because blue is such a strong color and it would overpower the yellow. So what happens is that when you're thinking about combining or mixing colors together, you want to think about the combination of how those colors are actually working in terms of um, their lightnesses to darknesses. But in this situation, I want to build up my colors slowly and not jump right into the green right away. I need to build up layers and layers so that I have a little bit more control over what's going on. So working with my lighter colors first allows me to actually see what's going on initially. So then um, once I've done that, then I take my blue and I'm going to put a layer of blue on top and you can see I'm doing it very, very lightly. It's not, um, it's not a very, very dark blue at this moment. As I build up layers on top of each other, they become darker and darker and I press a little bit more. I'm also going to be using a blending uh, pencil. So I use Prismacolor blending pencil. I really love Prismacolor blending pencils. They are a nice kind of medium um, blending pencil uh, and they work very, very well for just kind of mixing colors together. So again, in this situation, I'm just going ahead and I'm putting a layer of blue on top and um, I'm going to, you know, kind of fast forward through this a little bit because it's a little bit long, but you'll be able to see the process of what's going on and get a pretty good idea of the end result. So you're, you're seeing me uh, fast forward in this, but what I wanted to talk about very quickly was the um, laying down. When you're laying down, you want to be nice and smooth about it and pretty consistent. Um, now I'm using the, uh, the blending pencil from Prismacolor and I'm just slowly blending it. You can see I'm just using little circles and I want to work as refined as I can, but you can see that I'm slowly getting um, a light green on here with the combination of the cadmium yellow and the cobalt blue. They've created a light green. So again, I'm just going to fast forward through a little section of this and you'll see the process, uh, the next part of the process of doing um, the layering.
So now that I've blended it, I am adding more yellow. And this time I'm going to be adding a little bit darker yellow. And so I'm pressing, so it's still the cadmium yellow that I'm working with from Polychromos. And, um, but I'm just pressing a little bit harder. And also what happens is that when you start layering on top of it and you press a little bit harder, um, it also helps to blend. And you'll see I'm very, very precise with my, um, with my lay down. I want it really nice and consistent. And that's another good way to get um, a good mix happening. So you can see with the yellow that it's, a little bit more on the yellow side now you know it's not so green or light green but as it builds up it's going to um, become a little bit more green with the blue added on top adding the blue on top of the yellow that I just put down and again I'm trying to be as precise as I possibly can and you'll see that it's starting to look a little bit more darker green and um, so you just keep on building and building as you you work and nice and precise and go nice and slow so once I've added this other blue layer I'm going to go ahead and I'll use the blending pencil and I'll mix it up again. And now that I am done a layer of the blue you can see the green coming out a little bit I'm adding more yellow again and I'm doing it as a, a gradient so I'm gonna go from light to dark and just adding more of the yellow so again it's really important that you build up with layers um, it's going to again it's gonna be give you more precision and you'll have more control over what's going on because then you can kind of step back and go okay so I need to darken it here I need to darken it or I need to work a little bit more there so it's really really important when you're working with color pencil to do layering and even you know even as something as simple as creating a new color by mixing only two colors it does require a, a good control over your medium and that means uh, working very very slowly and precise with the layering, lots of layering going on. And I'm just finishing off the gradient of the yellow with blue uh, mixed to secondary color of green with the uh, blending pencil and it's got a really nice value range on it um, uh, just to give you an idea on how to actually put these two uh, colors together to create a new one. So the next color that we're going to be doing is orange and we're going to go ahead and again start with uh, the cadmium yellow. Uh, from Polychromos and we'll put that down again as a base color. Once we have the base of the yellow, we're going to add a layer of red, and the red that I'm going to be using is a Lazarian Crimson, and again, that's from uh, that's Polychromos Faber-Castell. 
So again, I'm just working very, very slow with this red. And I tried to find a red that was as close to a primary color red to get um, a pretty good orange that we're, you know, that we're striving for. So I finished my first layer of the red and I'm just using the blending pencil now from Prismacolor to blend the yellow and the red together. And I'll work on that um, a little bit and then I'm going to go back again to adding the yellow and another layer of red on top of that. So I just finished another layer of yellow and now I'm adding another layer of the red and I am really taking my time trying to make sure that I get a nice even coverage so that it's nice and consistent and also I want a little bit of a gradient happening and I want to make sure that um, I get a really nice consistent gradient happening with the colors. So I am pressing a little bit harder with the red to try to get that red to really pop out with the yellow and in combination it's going to make a really nice orange. I've added another layer of the red and now I'm going to start working on uh, the yellow again and using the yellow at this point I can use it to really start blending but because the red is quite strong I'm gonna to have to come in with the red and do a little bit of cleanup and make sure that I don't really see any lines there's a little bit of lines that I can see so I'll come back after I've done this layer of yellow and I'll just clean it up a little bit and make it a little bit nice and, and tidy. So here I am with the red and I'm just going to tidy it up a little bit and uh, try to eliminate some of the lines that you can see and that's just going to help to also um, make the uh, the overall impression of the gradient um, that much better. finish the orange gradient we're going to move on to doing the purple and the purple is going to we're going to start off with the red as the base um, I would say that the red and the blue in terms of their value range is pretty similar I um, I think that the blue is a little bit deeper so in this situation I actually chose red as the base color and then I'm going to just add the blue on top and then continue to build up uh, again layers on layers and once I've done that then it's going to um, lean towards the purples. 
And again, I'll make sure that it's nice and laid down and consistent in terms of its, um, I don't see any lines and there's no scribbles. I just want to see color and value change. So now that I've finished with the, the red, I'm adding the cobalt blue. Uh, it's the same cobalt blue that I used with the yellow to make the green. So I'm just putting that on very, very light. Again, it's exactly the way that I did all the other ones or the two other ones. And it's just taking your time and adding your values a uh, little bit at a time. So now what I'm doing is I'm working with the blending pencil and I'm making sure that the blending pencil um, is just nicely blending those reds and the blue together. And um, I would say that this combination of color is a little bit harder to, uh, to manage and to get a nice purple. It's kind of leaning a little bit towards the violets or even almost like the magentas. But as I keep building up the blue, I'll keep on thinking about that and add a little bit more blue just to calm it down a little bit so it's not so on the red side. And I think that's really, really important. Again, when you're working with layering, then you have a little bit more control over what's going on. But the end result is that we're still trying to use primary colors to get secondary colors. And I think that's what's so cool and fantastic about this medium um, that it's easily done you can you know you can do that by layering on top of each other and it's really just a good understanding of the way that value ranges work um, and how hues uh, work or colors work um, with the color wheel and working with you know, primary colors and how you can get other colors easily you can do a whole drawing just by working with primary and secondary colors so that's like fantastic i love that So I just finished adding the red again and now I'm working with the cobalt blue on top of the red and I'm going to try to eliminate some of that crazy red that's going on and add enough of the blue to make it a little bit more purple and um, I think that it's you know you just keep on building keep on working at it and you'll get it. So I finished adding the layer of red and I also finished um, working with the blending pencil and um, I'm pressing a little bit harder again because um, the more you press harder the more it helps to blend and now I'm back with the cobalt and just adding another layer of the cobalt and you can see the purple is really starting to pop out now and it's you know starting to look a little bit more on the purple side as opposed to magenta so that's what I'm striving for is a little bit more on the bluey purpley side or the not so much of the red a little bit more blue added into it and I think that it's slowly getting there
So now that I've worked on that purple, um, I'm going to be combining all three of the primary colors together to uh, show you what actually happens when you combine uh, primary colors on top of each other. So I'm going to start with the lightest of those primary colors, which is the cadmium yellow. And I'm going to add the red on top of that and then the blue. And again, it's, uh, it's just a combination that I keep on thinking about that if I put down blue first, yellow is going to struggle a little bit on top of the blue. So working with a lighter color, again, this is just um, just a, you could say it, it's a bit of a preference, but also just based on experience that um, when you have a, a darker color on the base, it's harder to actually work with the lighter colors on top. It's not impossible, but just in the combination of how they blend together. And you know what? I would suggest that you do some practice to see how that actually works. So in this situation, I'm working with yellow as a base. I'll do red on top of that, and then I'll work with the blue, and I'll strive towards um, really kind of making it brown to gray to or brown to black, or not quite a, a, a solid solid black, but it's going to go um, quite dark. So yeah, let's just see what happens. So you can see at this point I am working with the blending pencil and um, the color combinations are looking kind of brownie grayish color. And again, this is like a great way to get an idea of the way that uh, colors work together. So I'm applying some yellow on top of this and again, uh, again, it's, it's just all about this layering and trying to see what those color combinations will do. So the more you work at this, the more you practice this, then you have a pretty good idea on what your colors can do. And again, I had mentioned this um, in my blog that uh, different brands are going to produce different color combinations because even though this is a cobalt blue and a cadmium yellow combination with the red, um, not all cobalt blues are going to be of the same uh, color range and or not all cadmium yellows from different brands are going to be the same. So I think it's really, really important that you watch what your colors are doing from the brand that you're working with. And also what happens if you work with different brands on the same drawing? How does the color uh, change? So um, the more practice that you do, the better you will have um, in terms of understanding what your colors will do. Here we are um, at the end and you can see just as I do some blending that I've got a really nice uh, value range happening. I think it's you know fantastic. I could probably add a little bit more red but there you go. Dark to, to light, kind of brown into a very very dark brown, almost black. Thanks for joining me.